Hi, it's Ryan from Nights Around a Table and... Uh, uh, oh, God. Why is my audio not synced with my lips? Well, I had a bit of a problem with uh, the capture card that I use to capture the Ryan shots in these videos. There's some kind of Windows 10 bug with the Elgato cam like 4K. You don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter. Uh, the deal is I, had, I lost the audio for this video and I still really wanted to post it. So I went back and I painstakingly overdubbed everything that I said. So it's going to be a little bit weird, but if you are patient with me, uh, we'll get through it together. Won't we? Does that look like I'm saying that? Do I look like I'm saying, won't we? I look kind of concerned, right? Look, my eyebrows are down. Anyway, whatever. Here we go. We'll start from the beginning and, uh, and, and let's try this out. Hi, it's Ryan from Nights Around a Table, and I had a birthday recently. It's something I like to do about once a year. And you may be wondering, hey, I wonder what uh, Ryan, who has board games coming out, the wazoo. In fact, I've been to the hospital to treat that, and there wasn't much they could do for me. What does he really, really want? Like when Ryan goes and buys games, what does he pick? So I was in that situation about a month back. It was a few weeks before my birthday, and my wife Cheryl and I were in the big city, in the big smoke, at uh, one of my favorite FLGSs, family local game stores, 401 Games. And uh, a couple of weeks to go to my birthday, and my wife Cheryl said, we should probably get your birthday gift right now because we don't know when stores are going to be shut down. And indeed, it was a very good call because just a couple of weeks later, all the non-essential stores in Toronto were shut down. And I don't know why board games are considered non-essential, but that's a, whole, that's a whole other thing. So we were there and she said, you know, pick out your birthday present. So I kind of had carte blanche to pick out whatever I wanted in the entire store. What did I pick? Don't look over here if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, it came down to Underwater Cities versus uh, Teotihuacan. Uh, and I didn't, uh, I could have got uh, Teotihuacan and all of the expansions that they had. Uh, but I thought, you know, for a game that's about a pyramid, about a ziggurat, it's a pretty flat looking board. I think I've been spoiled by games that have a uh, ridiculous vertical table presence like the tree in Everdell. Uh, and there are a bunch of others that just like, you know, pop right off the table. So if a board game, board get definition, board flat, board game doesn't do that anymore, I'm kind of like, meh, you know, meh. <laughs> Does it have seven inches of height? No. Just a few weeks after that, uh, I got Tekenu, Obelisk of the Sun, which does have about six inches of height. So look at that. I'm a total board game size queen. Here we are. I picked up Underwater Cities uh, and uh, and yes, I grabbed the expansion as well. Uh, because I'm a, I'm a sick individual, but uh, I buy games for the dumbest reasons, and this might annoy you. Uh, I actually asked Rio Grande Games if they could send copies of these along, and they said uh, no. Uh, so <laughs> I went out and got them myself. They were very good to me, though, in that they sent uh, Roll for the Galaxy Rivalry, which was on my list for a long time, and it's taking, taking a long time, a really long time, to get that onto the channel. Because it's like two different game modes, and you can combine the game modes. We have to play a whole bunch of times, you know, to sort of get the gist of it. But I'm working on that. If you're excited about Roll for the Galaxy Rivalry and Ambition, uh, the first two expansions for that game, it's coming. Keep your eyes... Don't wait up, but it's coming. These games, I buy games for the dumbest reasons, which is the point that I was on. I did not buy Underwater Cities, but the very first time I saw it, uh, it was the very first time I went to my friend Doc's house, and he was having a get-together with the guys, and he was running like a three-ring circus where he's got games set up on all kinds of tables. He had this set up, and so I got to see what it looked like. It's very beautiful looking, as you will find out shortly if you've never seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm amazed you're still watching, but uh, he had it set up and I uh, I opted actually, I said to some of the other fellows who said, I, I've never heard so much about Terraforming Mars, I've never played it, do you want to play that? So we did. And in the time it took us to get through a full, I think it was four player game of Terraforming Mars, they were still playing Underwater Cities. So it doesn't seem like a short game by any means, but nobody knew it and they, Doc had to teach them. I think everybody had played Terraforming Mars but me. Um, interesting though, but it's, it's... What's interesting to me, maybe not you, but what's interesting to me is that the connection between Terraforming Mars and Underwater Cities is that Terraforming Mars had frequent complaints about the fact that you're putting cubes on a flat board that isn't recessed. You know, it doesn't have those little divots to hold the cubes in. And if you are in an earthquake zone or you have 
pets or kids, or if you, you know, if you have tremors or whatever's going on, uh, you could shake the board and if those cues dislodge from the spots they're marking, it kind of messes up the game if you don't remember how to put them back. It, uh, it's a pretty big um, upset. Uh, so it's, some people were saying it's not a big deal and some people were saying it's a huge deal. And I thought to myself, as good as a game as I've heard Terraforming Mars is, I'm going to wait until recess boards are available before I make a purchase, because that seems like a pretty uh, decent complaint about the game. Enter Underwater City, which I, I had no idea what was up with the boards or anything, but I picked up uh, the expansion when I was in the board game store, and one of the things it said, gee was I hope it says this on this on this box, New Metropolis's Church of Bottom of the Sea. There it is. I actually, I'll see if I can put it under the close-up cam so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, it's this part. Three layered and extra player boards. Layered player boards hold all components securely in place. Da 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 da. Which, using my power of deduction, I figured out that the base game must not have layered player boards. And that must be an issue if they made that a component of the expansion. Nah, nah. Call me Sherlock. So. I thought, well, if I made that rule for Terraforming Mars as soon as they got recessed player boards, I will bite, uh, then, you know, it's the same thing with Underwater Cities. So that was half of the dumb reason I really wanted Underwater Cities. The other half of the dumb reason, this is way worse than that first thing, is that on the back, it shows some cards and it shows this shark looking thing here. And I swear, when I saw it in the store, it was a guy with a shark head. I swear that's what I saw when I looked at the card. And then when I got these games home for, you know, my birthday, uh, I had looked and it's just, it's just a shark. Uh, and I thought, when I thought it was a guy, it harkened back to like, do you, I, ever heard of that show Tiger Sharks? It was like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ripoff. Here's the dumb thing. I never watched Tiger Sharks, but I was filled with nostalgia and I thought, oh, that's cool. I didn't know they're like anthropomorphic sea creatures in underwater cities. I didn't know there was kind of like a fantastical element to it. Uh, and no, I don't think there is. There are no shark, <laughs> shark men at all in the game. Uh, but I, I wouldn't blew my birthday wish on it anyway. So I hope that the favorable things I've heard about the game bear out. So here's the even dumber thing that I'm just noticing as I'm editing the video. Obviously, tiger sharks isn't a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ripoff, it's a Thundercats ripoff. I'm thinking Street Sharks. So I, I didn't even get the name of the show correct. Oh, I'll just forget about it. I'm going to get uh, my money's worth out of this, so I'm going to turn this into two different videos. In this one, we'll crack this thing open, and in this one, uh, and in another video, we'll crack this open, and then I'm going to do a third Underwater Cities video because Laser Ox, which is a company that produces these laser cut wood inserts, has sent me the their Underwater Cities reorganizer. So I'm gonna shoot a reboxing video with that product and I'll time lapse it and I'll show you how all this stuff goes back together. I think they pitch that it goes back together in the same box with their insert. I'll believe it when I see it. So if you're interested in Underwater Cities and what I have to say about it and the amazing discoveries I make and the childish banter that I yammer on about when I'm opening them, watch this one, watch this one, and then definitely watch the reboxing. Here we go. We'll put this away for now. Da 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 da. So the, the little bit of verticality that this one does have which you'll see shortly is that there are cool little uh, domes that sort of uh, mimic or, or, or what is the word I'm trying to say? They, they signify the domed underwater, titular underwater cities, you know, to make them protected because you can't have all that water in your house. Here we are. Box fartometer, zero. Are we surprised? I don't think so. If any of you are watching these videos from your uh, comp suites in Vegas and you're thinking about putting money on the box fartometer, the smart money is on zero. Uh, just <laughs> know how to hold a lot. So right off the bat, these are the uh, the domes I was talking about. I'm gonna put them under the close-up cam for you to get a closer gander at. Here they are. Da -da 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 -da. You can play a little three card Monty shell game with them. Nice, yes, lovely. And there's Slightly, I'm surprised to find that they're ever so slightly textured. Look at that little kind of pock-marked effect going on in the domed 
in the dome. And then there's a whole you know, bag of them, light ones, red ones, and green ones, which I'm sure have some sort of game significance. Never played it. I don't know. Have you played? Maybe you have. Maybe you would like to tell me all about it in the comments. Whether you enjoyed it, didn't enjoy it, whether it took you longer than a game of Terraforming Mars, because Terraforming Mars, that ain't a short game. That can go on for quite a while. Uh, over here, some, I'm assuming player markers, because it looks like there are just enough to be three in each color. Get back here, orange. So there's black, orange, purple, and blue, and a special white one that might be, since it's the odd one out, the start player marker. Not a super interesting start player marker, but there they are. Discs. And what else do we have? Some cards, I'm gonna put these away. Uh, it's interesting that some companies put their cards, they're bound and wrapped and with the rip strip and everything or not. Um, but very rarely will I see cards put in a bag like this. So I think this means that somebody actually had to like sort cards and human, human hands have handled this bag. That fascinates me. I'm not sure why. Little message written here. Help, I am trapped in the factory. No, just kidding. Just kidding, Rio Grande. Uh, then there are these. Ah, so Rio Grande is becoming known to me for reusing components, and there's nothing wrong with that. I like to have unique components, a few unique components in every game that I own. These are just more plastic discs, and I'm trying to remember the recent Rio Grande game I played that had these little plastic discs in them that looked good enough to eat in three colors, green, yellow, and white. Get out of there, craft knife. Fine. They've thrown a whole bunch of baggies in here to put everything back. I appreciate that. But one thing that Rio Grande as a publisher doesn't do that well is, well, uh, is inserts. Uh, so that companies like Laserox can come in and, and sort of, uh, jump in on, capitalize on that. So usually what they have is what I call the well, which is just like two pieces of cardboard that cut in like this and then boosh down and you just got a pit. And I think that's meant to help it so that you can store it vertically or, or horizontally and you're, Pieces won't slosh around too much. I think it seems like there's enough pieces in this game that they didn't even, they don't even have room for the well, which I think bodes well for the, um, the insert that we're, uh, we're gonna put together in another video. Um, so here- Wow, these aren't the- are these the player mats? Oh my lord. These are like... cheap and flimsy. These feel like Kino tickets. Like, these are really bad. Really, really bad. I'm not- at all impressed with the component quality on those. I think this is the very first time that I've called out components for feeling so flimsy and cheap. These are for, this is like if you go and get prints done at Staples, this is the kind of stock that they're on. That's pretty brutal. So I hope that the expansion has, uh, maybe that's the recessed boards. They're thicker and they're, they're nicer. That's, that's pretty poor. Um, I don't think I realized that Vladimir, Su I can't pronounce his last name. I haven't looked it up. Sorry, Suki Suchi. Uh, Vlad S, um, who's one of the two Vlads who usually designs games for Czech Games Edition. I didn't realize that he was the designer on this. That makes me more excited to play because I quite like his stuff. He did Last Will, he did Pulsar 2849, and a few others that escaped me. Well, maybe put some images of them on the screen of Vlad games that I've played. Uh, let's get into it. I noticed that themes tend to, there's, there's like a theme zeitgeist. So 2020 was the year of uh, our loved ones dying of a deadly virus. And, uh, and also, uh, the pirate themes. There were tons of Kickstarter pirate games through 2020. And if you saw, I did do a how to play videos for at least two of them. It's all a blur now, I can barely remember. But I also noticed like 2019, maybe early 2020, there were a ton of underwater games. Days of Wonder had one, and there was another one called, I'm gonna forget all the titles, but again, I'll flash the pictures there. One is called Maybe Sunken Treasures, something the deep, Blue? Something to treasure, treasure hunter? Water octopus? I don't know. You see the picture there. Thank God for post me editing. Um, and they, you know, this is part and parcel of that whole zeitgeisty theme frenzy. This is the rule book. Plenty of pictures. Plenty of text. Lots of uh, pictorial examples. It's about half and half maybe pictures and text. Looks lovely. Kind of a captivating theme. It's neat. I mean, I think people who go for the underwater theme... Oh, I should give you a page count. Do you want to know? It's 20 pages. That's not insubstantial. People who I think go for the underwater theme uh, are people who go for space themes too. Because there's a lot of parallels between underwater and space, right? They're both 
inhospitable environments that you have to have special equipment to traverse. I'm gonna pop one of each of these here and I'm gonna guess at their meaning. Whoa, big pile of stuff. Don't go anywhere, cards. We're gonna need you in a second. Here we are. So, something representing presumably plants or biology, uh, chemistry maybe, communism, I don't know what that is, the wounds, it's probably a good thing because the other ones seem like good things. This is going to be uh, eggs, a nice half dozen eggs, and uh, money. Money, it looks like credits. Hmm. Uh, and what else is in here? Hexes! Oh, lots of cardboard left in the box. Um, there's a sheet, there's a sheet. These look interesting though. Look at this, little, little strippy strips of something or other. I'm not too sure. What is that, do you think? Is that like a health bar or oxygen gauge? I would be surprised if there's no sort of oxygen gauge in this game or, or requirement to worry about the amount of oxygen that is in your underwater city. If I, you know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I will probably never build an underwater city in real life. And if I did, I'm very high priority being able to breathe. Uh, hexes, I said I'd pop them out. Uh, this kind of, this one kind of looks like a circus tent, but I think it's made, meant to depict white or red dome or both on your city. I'll throw a few more on there. Of course, I've never played, so I can't interpret those symbols for you. And thank God, that you haven't sent me into pyramids to tell you what the Egyptians used to be saying, because... I'd be similarly up a creek. People be like, why do we fundraise for this guy? Send, send somebody else. Somebody else is more qualified. Great. Um, mostly the same pieces in the other sheets. More of these, what I'm presuming to be oxygen gauges. A couple of these tiles that look kind of like... That? <laughs> hmm? Meow. Um, looks like markers, uh, uh, sorry. Markers, if you have more resources than you actually have physical resources, you can put one on there and say, I have ten of them now. You've seen that in other games before. Have you played games? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, oh, I think maybe, are these the player boards? Hmm. I wonder if these are the player boards that they were talking about being recessed in the expansion. So there are one, two, three, four of them, leading me to believe it's a four-player game. That is where you're going to be building your underwater city. This is where you're going to be placing your underwater city domes and routes that connect them, tunnels and such. And things. Thank goodness there is no danger from shark men. But we haven't looked at the cards yet. I'm still, I'm holding, there's a vague hope that I'm holding out for the existence of shark men in this, or shark women. I'm not, I'm equal opportunity shark creature. Here we are. There's the board. Looks like a bunch of different cards that we can buy go on these spaces and presumably two different sides depending on player count. Three to four players up here with a cute little scuba mask so it's nice and thematic. I like thematic games. Cards get placed here and here and here and you buy them and you do things. Score tracker. Dude, that's all I got. Cool. Let's dig into those cards. I'll put this away. The board is kind of not lying flat, I've noticed. It's not really... It's kind of bubbling up. Have you ever ever had that problem? What do you do about that? Do you just put heavy stuff on it for days and days and days? Or is there a way, like, you don't want to uh, crack the spine in the opposite direction in case you, you know, rip the paper on one side? If you have a way to overcome a bouncy, flouncy board, let me know. So, pack one of roughly... 50,000 cards. The backs, let's scooch all the stuff on the overhead camera over here. The backs look like there's a back. There's a back. And the back. I don't think the backs are going to be the more interesting element of these cards. But very bold, striking graphic design on these. Let's flip them and see what we got. Oh, it's this guy. What's this guy all about? Woo! His name is Personal Assistant. Huh. That's strange. Some, it's kind of like a very prescient of his parents. Here we go. Let's name him personal assistant. And that's probably what he turned out to be in life. 
Uh, so his name is Personal Assistant, and he says in the bottom of the card, uh, ready to fly. Uh, I mean, dive. Uh, I'm always doing that. Uh, uh, <laughs> and we have, I'm such a, I'm a jerk to Personal Assistant for no reason. He didn't do anything to me. I'm sure he's a lovely person. Uh, this is, uh, some sort of, uh, island. Uh, we can tell because it says so. And there's also a picture of an island. Always thinking. And, uh, some symbols. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do these videos? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, and you're probably not sure either. Let's just carry on together. <sighs> uh, the flag one has a lady on the back, and the lady is saying... She's saying, are you, are you happy with your car insurance? I don't know what she's even doing. I amused myself. That wasn't very amusing, but she looks vaguely Greek or Atlantean. Those little like sort of like Wonder Woman bracelets. So there's some sort of classical theming to her garb. He doesn't have that. He looks like a flipping X-wing fighter pilot. Kind of an interesting dichotomy. Um... I'm so dumb, but I know words like dichotomy. Uh, it's kind of a dichotomy. Uh, and then again, the circus tent symbol and something about a green dome, and I am not able to read that text, but maybe you can because my monitor is too far away and my eyes are too old. Uh, right, cards. Um, I don't know if we're gonna find anything else super fascinating or interesting. Play some others on the close-up cam. Da, da, da. Lots of deep, dark stuff. I wonder if these are depth-rated cards. These guys, are these guys underwater? I don't know if I'd wear a itchy suit underwater. I don't know if that's the best choice. Uh, oh, those look like tunnels. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe those aren't oxygen gauges. Maybe those represent tunnels or construction tun- Whoa, look at the hair on that one! What is- <laughs> What is happening? Oh my god, I just woke up like this, I swear. The- <laughs> Like, oh, you get down there and your hair just like naturally does that and you're like no shower to sort of tamp it down and like water, water everywhere, but nary a drop to make me not look like a <laughs> doofus. What's happening? I guess it's the future. I think that's what's happening. It's the future and everybody's got wacky hair. No, leave me a couple more. Maybe I can make fun of somebody who's not a person of color. Please show me a white dork in this deck so that I don't get angry. Oh, here's one. This guy. <laughs> there's, there's a white dork asking ye shall receive. White dork, white dork. <sighs> I don't even know. I don't know. I think it's more of the same. I'm going to save you my casual racism. Oh, there's some, there's a bunch of repeat cards actually. Uh, there's, she's in, woo -hoo -hoo. she's in there again, and I saw our dork again. Whoa, look at this. The people on these cards look like kind of nerdy, I just gotta say. Oh, look, she's, she's back. So a lot of repeated artwork in the cards. I can't say to you that all of the cards in Underwater Cities are unique, but they certainly are unique. Um, I think, did we do it all? That's it. I think we did it all. We saw the cards, we saw the boards, we saw the domes. Uh, that's what you get in Underwater Cities. As far as gameplay experience goes, you're gonna have to tell me, leave a comment down below. Uh, not down below like in an Underwater City. That's crazy talk. That's the future. No, in the present, comment uh, below the video. And join us on the Discord server, and you can comment in real time to our virtual faces. And when I say our, I mean we and the, the crew, the people who are supporting me on Patreon, the people who aren't, who regularly get kick banned because I'm angry at them. No, not really. You don't have to be a patron supporter, a uh, Patreon supporter to join the Discord server. And I'd love to see you there and chat with games about you. Uh, that's a take two. I would love to see you there and chat about games with you. Jo join us, and we'll see you in the very next video. Watch it. I'm not sure why you would. Got a gear, got a gear, got a gear, got a gear. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.